the topography of human relations, landscapes for the border country, and musical stories from Joe Lindsayus and Friends. That's tonight on The Playlist. Funding for The Playlist is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. It's a group effort when Joe Lindsayus gets together with his musical buddies. Tonight, you're invited to join in. Please welcome Joe and friends to the playlist. my world I guess that was meant to be I done sing to you girl I wonder why we ever meet or I swear you're from another life ago or a dream I never dreamed some high just knowing so all I need to be But I'm afraid to see you now Cause I might fall Fall all over again The chills that you put down my back Confuse me Cause you're supposed to be my friend I'm sorry I bend your ear, but you listen all the time. Well, you're closer than some of my own blood. No one else I know would pay no mind. Well, I'm afraid to see you now, because I might fall. Fall all over again. Chills that you put down my back confuse me Cause you're supposed to be my friend Joe Lindsayus and friends, and we'll be back right after this. It is thrilling to play this instrument. And even though you know that so much of the sound is going over your head, that you're not even really hearing what it sounds like downstairs. But the combination of the responsiveness of the key action, the beautiful tones that come out, and the way the sounds bloom in this space is an incredible combination and experience. The program is entitled Light in Our Darkness and at this darkest time of year Karen and I wanted to put together a program that would bring some light and some joy and some illumination to the darkness of uh, our 
daily experience. My name is David Trigested, and I am the resident organist here at Sacred Heart Music Center. I would uh, challenge anyone who thinks they know what the organ sounds like to come because I think they'll hear things that they've never heard of before or considered before in terms of the colors, the style, uh, the brilliance and the dancing, as well as the heaviness, the gravitas of some of the uh, standard repertoire. The program is at Sacred Heart Music Center at 3 o'clock on Sunday, the 13th of January. Uh, tickets are available at the door for $10. All the proceeds go to Sacred Heart. Well, there's a new installation at the Duluth Art Institute filling the Morrison Gallery with simply powerful work. It's a visual confluence meant to stretch our understanding of boundaries and what we really control. Carla Stetson and Cecilia Ramon are here to tell us a little bit more about the exhibit. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Two very accomplished artists who are not necessarily living in the same town right now. So tell me a little bit about how the theme, how the focus came together. Well, we started, um, we've been, I lived in Duluth for about 20 years and we met a long time ago, but we always had this a similar sense about the kinds of things that we were making art about. And it, we grew, we had a, a two person show together and sort of things grew from there and be, it became more interesting to collaborate than to just show her work and my work, but to actually work together. So Cecilia, did you say, okay, then I think we should do a big installation <laughs> yeah. piece, or how did that yeah. go? Well, we found a way to start working. We realized that it was so interesting to try to merge. Instead of having her work and my work, we started to really work together uh, to visualize a piece and to actually do our work, sending via mail and we started to do a series of drawings and uh, we would work and then the work became different. It just wasn't Carla's or mine. It was another It really took on entity. a life of its own. Yeah. It became its own entity. <laughs> it had its own energy and then it, it became even more fun to work on. It was we could just work on top of each other's pieces. It wasn't, um, it was like I said, it's its own life. It had its own life. And I yeah. think it's even now taking shape in the gallery. We so it's still being built. We have <laughs> a chance to show you a little bit of, of what Carla's talking about. We'll show you that. And you can explain you the, the unity was supposed to come initially from using the same materials, paper, graphite, right. stitching. Mm -hmm. And look what happened. Yeah. It's just incredible. Yeah, the vellum was fun to use because we could score it and create a drawing with light. So we added that to the idea of drawing with stitching. And um, so we, there is a little bit of actual drawing with a pencil in the piece, but not a lot. It's drawing with unusual materials. Yeah. And it, it is almost luminescent, and mm -hmm. it hasn't even fully been installed yet. So mm -hmm. what is it, you know, when you were making these pieces and mailing them back and forth, you know, did you have a complete understanding of what that other person was doing, or how was that process? Well, it was always a little bit of a surprise, too, to receive a box with these drawings 12 by 12 that are easy to mail and see oh this is what she did on top of my piece w and a, l a huge learning um, experience like I wouldn't have done those steps and uh, now it's been really interesting to see coming alive because we never had it away from the wall uh, you know a few inches uh, uh, from the wall and it has been wonderful to be in the Duluth Art Institute installing it, having the support of all the staff to really have all this time, you no know, more than two weeks now, we will To make it happen. To make it to happen. To finalize it. Yeah. So yeah. one of the things we were talking about is, in what I see in here is, if, if you're familiar with this landscape, you know the topography of Lake Superior, you know kind of what snow looks like when it, when it piles up. Well, mm -hmm. not this year. <laughs> okay, let's talk about water then, water <laughs> and ripples. I mean, there are things, even sand that have that kind of contour? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that when we, when we thought about doing this, we were thinking mostly of air. So some of the ways that 
air currents move are very similar to water. So there's a lot of, you know, um, maybe we're speaking about water and air, water vapor, yeah. wind currents, yeah. as well as, and we're, we're also talking about, um, in it looking at the earth from the vantage point of being in an airplane or in the troposphere up high, but also the experience of looking at clouds from being below. So I think they're both in this piece. One of the things you guys told me is you like the larger scale right. things. <laughs> and Cecilia, you kind of like things a little more precise. Yeah. And so there are details in the, the work that are almost like, like the grids of a city. Yeah, yeah, so it was interesting. That's the, the part of the learning process too, that the surprise and doing things, like to grow from tending to want to go more detailed to go to this bigger gesture that Carla has more vision and I've been able to, it was interesting that to learn from each other, I think, that yeah. we both. And what do you hope people take away from seeing the big piece? Well, I think an appreciation of well, luminosity and, and the enveloping of air and sort of the support of the atmosphere. I guess um, we also think that it's a little bit about uncontrollability. And that's what we've gained too by working together, just the sense yeah. of we don't have to control everything, but um, it can, you know, through working together we can create this other piece, I guess. Yeah, it's beautiful, but each of you do have a piece in this show. Carla, yours is a huge Lake Superior with a little, a little Hand, something more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's gorgeous. And it's a different way. They let you draw on the wall. They let us draw on the wall, and they let me, you know, just have a drawing. And it doesn't have to be framed. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's a little humorous, but it's also about, you know, I lived with the lake for 20 years. It was very present. I loved Duluth. And then when I moved away, only then did I start making artwork about the lake or realize what it meant to me, and so this is my way of expressing that, sort of the topography of the hand and the topography of the lake. And Cecilia, your piece, um, for me, plays with light. You know, not only the, the structure of it has beautiful um, yeah. form, but I love the way it, it, refl it casts its shadow. Mm -hmm. And in one way or another, too, this piece, in a very different way that uh, Carla uh, expresses her feelings about uh, place, this piece is also a place and displacement in the sense of where do we stand? Is it that solid? And, and, and is that a bad thing? I, if it's not so, you know, the piece has this, uh, there are these pieces of wood suspended and I hope that there is that feeling that not to be so secure of what's happening is not a bad thing. It's, it brings a preciousness to every moment that we don't know what's going to happen you know, the next moment. So. It is a gift to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. And Thank I just you. Thank you very much. wish you all the best. I'm looking forward to seeing the finished piece. That's Great. exciting. And I want to remind you that the gallery show opens Thursday, January 17th, along with the Art Institute's annual member show and another exhibit featuring emerging photographers. The reception begins at 5 in the Duluth Depot. Now, Sherry Serrano grew up north of the border, working at her family's resort on Rainy Lake. The landscape continues to inspire her, and her remote island studio offers the perfect perch for painting. I think it's just beautiful everywhere I look. I just hope I live long enough to capture all the beauty I see every time I go out on the lake. You just never know what you're going to see. It changes so quickly on from hour to hour. That's some of my best compliments is when people that have spent time here and grew up here tell me that that's what it really looks like. That's rainy. I don't think it can get any better than that. My name is Sherry Serrano, and we are on Rainy Lake, and I am a landscape artist. So I'm working on a, a Rainy Lake scene that's about half a mile from the cabin here. 
lot of times I take pictures and then I bring them back and I'll use them for reference but um, there's only so much you can take from a photograph. So I try to work outside as much as I can and basically just kind of fill in from what I, I know and see while I'm out on the lake. I'm just trying to lighten up some of the trees. Just imagine what it would be like to have some of the light from the, the setting sun peeking through the trees. So I put colors in and sometimes I take them out because they look too, they stand out too much. So I kind of just go over it until I'm happy with it and it looks like it should look. And then I, I really have a quite simple palette. I usually just paint with about um, five or six paints different colors and it, it takes takes you a long way. It helps to drink coffee when you're painting trees <laughs> but um, painting waves n not so much. If I was really fast I would try to capture that boat out there. <laughs> Looks really pretty. You know, it's important to paint what you love and paint what you know, and um, people can sense it. I hope that people can sense it and see that I, I love this area, and given my experience and background here, it really isn't work. Sherry's work is featured in the Wild Wings Gallery out of Red Wing, and you can see more of her work online. Now in our gallery tonight, we have a painting by Scott Murphy. He's a Duluth artist also known for his gigantic murals. He has a smaller piece on display at Lizard's Art Gallery here in downtown Duluth. Now if you have art, an art tip for us, please check out our website at theplaylistonline.org. Excuse me. <clears throat> You can listen to music, watch stories, and sign up to be part of our studio audience. Like us on Facebook and follow along on Twitter for the latest happenings. And now please welcome back Joe Linzius and friends. dead sleep button again and so I lay so I lay well I'm free when I'm dreaming well, I'm free when I'm flying right when I fly or oh, dream about you your time is right And your time is right I sing a simple song Or harmonize and strum Acoustic chords that might ring a bell Rickety fingers can't do much picking They offer color Stories I tell Oh, the stories I can tell Well, I'm free When I'm playing music And I'm free When I harmonize When I sang about you Why, well, any time is right Playing you. 
music And I'm free when I harmonize And when I sing about you Any time in life Any time in life I think you like what you're doing, Joe. Oh, yes, I have a good time doing this with my <laughs> friends, yeah. Will you, Joe Lindsayus, will you introduce your bandmates? Here? I'd be glad to. This is Neil, all the way from Duluth, Minnesota. <laughs> John, all the way from Iron River, Wisconsin. And Mike from Superior, Wisconsin. I'm Joe, and these are my friends. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about your background, Joe. Um, jazz musician to Molly and the Haymakers to original music. Tell yeah, me a little bit about that journey. I've been accused of being a chameleon, so uh, that's really one of the things. I don't do anything real great, but uh, I can do a lot of different stuff. And uh, uh, thankful that I have friends like this and musicians that uh, I'm able to get better at things and, and playing. <laughs> I think so. So tell me a little bit about your writing process. Uh, well, I, I think people want to hear about the writer, not so much about a philosophical thing, although Dylan does pretty good at that. <laughs> but uh, what I do, I just try to make, blow up the little things in my life that, uh, and some bigger things that happen too, but uh, it's a story that is true rather than made up anymore. I used to write more made up stuff, kind of, um, well, not, not as, not as a storybook like this is more a story. Mm -hmm. To take one small germ idea and make it a, a full song, a well, full French song. Your last song has a good story to it, and you guys are regulars at at the Thirsty Pagan in uh, Superior, Wisconsin. On Wednesdays. On Wednesdays and is Little Big Band, and Sundays is Joe and Friends. Okay, and your next gig here in Duluth. In Duluth at the uh, Brew House next Tuesday. Okay, well, awesome. At starting at ten o'clock. Well, thank you for bringing your reg regular gig on the road for us tonight. I thank you for having us. This is a gas. Yeah. Mighty well, fine, mighty fine hospitality. All right. Well, Thanks, thank kid. you very thank much. You yeah. I know you got one more for us. Now, um, these guys are going to play one more for us tonight. So we'll, we'll keep an eye out for where you're playing around town. Have a great weekend, everybody. And remember to go out and explore the arts and live music whenever you get the chance. Joel, please yeah. play us out. I had another true story here. Sunday start, a beautiful night lights, a cozy little piece of heaven. A cozy little place on a Northwoods lake where everybody's like your best friend. There was hooch and whiskey, beer and wine, you know who tried them all. I was doing okay till I stepped away to catch a little buzz along. The dark walking up a hill, what I thought was an even keel. When my foot caught the wood of the devil, tripping me up for a real good spill. It was a fall, seemed to last a lifetime. To my head, high fived a tree. All in a pitch black demon night, mm, got the best of me. The devil lured me in Way beyond where I wanted to go Flew by the point of no return Flew right past out of control Picked myself up, trying to think straight I staggered down to the lake Lori looked at me and said was the side of your head already? Hmm. I said I met an evil spirit on a hill. Don't know which bottle he was hiding in. Called
holy confession did I learn a lesson on will I do it again I said the devil lured me in way beyond where I wanted to go flew by the point of no return flew right past out of control Said the devil lured me in way beyond where I wanted to go. Evil roots and hooch and whiskey, they don't jive. Evil roots and nasty roots, they don't mix. If I had any common sense, uh, Mikey, I, would I be here saying that? But there is a party I heard backstage after this is done. Uh, it can be continued at Karen's house. But I think I'm going to have to take a pass and uh, fade away.